Um, I will try to make an effort to speak loud. I have a very uh, soft uh, voice, but yeah. Uh, um, so I'm, I'm going to make a, a, my presentation a little bit different. I'm going to start asking three questions, and hopefully I can get some feedback from, from you guys. Um, who here does not know what a GPU hang is? Carlos? Yeah? It's a bit louder. We are not hearing it here. Okay. The microphone is okay. It's okay for the audience. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was, I was, I was saying, uh, who here does not know what a GPU hang is? <laughs> okay. So I mean, this is the graphics room, right? So I would expect it to, to have a bunch of graphics people. Um, but actually, gra a GPU hang is basically something that happens with it due to the applications of by the driver, and where where the GPU just basically hangs. It's very simple. Now, who here um, has ever faced a GPU hang? A lot of people. <laughs> and how many of you here has faced it on, on an Intel hardware? OK, good. <laughs> so quite a bit of you. <laughs> OK, so uh, maybe this presentation could be a little bit of interest to, to, to uh, some of you. Um, my name is Carlos Santa. I uh, work at the uh, Intel Open Source Technology Center, um, and I support graphics drivers for, for uh, uh, Chrome OS. The topic of my presentation is a low latency GPU engine uh, base reset mechanism for a more, a more robust uh, UI experience. It's a very long title, but from, from here you can probably infer, infer um, low latency GPU reset uh, engine, and then UI experience. So what I'm trying to do here is basically uh, improve the user experience by introducing a, a different reset mechanism that we have in the graphics drivers. Uh, the agenda for today, uh, a little bit of the problem statement. Uh, what is the uh, limitation in the GPU driver? Uh, the a, a proposed solution. Uh, it's called uh, timeout detection and recovery. I, I'm going to try to explain that in a little bit. Um, it's a low latency based reset mechanism, which means there's a timer somewhere. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a little bit how how low that latency uh, can can be. Um, while we implement this mechanism, we need to also think about preemption. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about preemption. And then the, uh, the latest would be the status in open source about the, the TDR. Uh, so Uh, a frozen UI, uh, black screen, or both, or uh, the, the worst case would be a, a whole reset of the system. So we would run the use case. It was basically, basically a, a like a video, uh, like a texture streaming video type of use case. And um, uh, what made it really hard was uh, that the issue would happen. It could happen from let's say minutes to hours, you know, we could be running this thing for like 10, 20 hours and eventually we'll see this, this issue. So that made a really, really bad um, problem. And so I was tasked to fix this problem. Um, and so I, I basically dived in into this issue by trying to understand the uh, graphics architecture in Chrome OS, because that was the platform that I was working on, and then see how I could uh, solve the, the problem. Now, I know this is a very busy uh, slide, but this is an overly simplified graphics architecture in Chrome OS. Um, the architecture is divided between the server side of things and then the client si side of things. Um, in Chrome OS, 
we have two main processes. One is the GPU process, and the other one is the renderer process. Um, the GPU process is a, it's a special process in Chrome OS in which it's the only one, it's the only process that it can uh, program the hardware. As you can see here, it's the one making the GL3D calls into the GPU driver. Um, the <coughs> clients, the uh, 3D clients, the context of the 3D clients also reside in this uh, process. And then on the renderer side, we have uh, the compositor as well as the client side of the app. In between them, we have a, uh, a shared memory buffer, which acts as a proxy b between them. Now, uh, th this architecture sort of works, but it's assumed that um, nothing bad happens to the GPU process. If something bad happens to this guy, then the whole thing breaks breaks down, which was ha actually happening. Um, we were running the video app, which is here. It is a very simple simple uh, texture streaming app. But we have, you know, it's uh, one of those apps where you have the uh, graphics API as well as the video APIs, both of them at the same time, and that was causing issues. That application was crashing. Uh, was crashing. Um, once that happens, uh, the default mechanism in the driver is to do a full reset of the whole GPU driver. Because the GPU process is a 3D process, if you reset the, the GPU, then the context goes away. And if that, that goes away, then that goes your, your UI. So that was basically what was happening. Um, we then realized that there was no really a need for us to do a full reset if the application was uh, a video, if the use case was a video use case. Um, basically, it, it, I mean, looking through the logs and, and all the investigation that I did, um, it turns out that the problem was this guy. Uh, something in the stream was damaging the, the media engine. And uh, even though this was the issue, we were still resetting the whole thing, and that was causing pro problems. So that was basically when we realized that the solution to this problem for this particular application was to uh, detect that it was, in fact, a media engine work, and that it was the media engine who was causing the hang. And at that point, we would just reset the uh, this, this particular engine. Um, I looked internally, uh, so I work at Intel, we, we have so many people, but I looked internally and turns out the solution was already in open source, I mean in the mailing list, in the DRM mailing list. It just so happens that those particular patches were not, uh, were not being merged for whatever reason, right? But so that's when I came in, right? I basically uh, took those patches and I'm trying to make the case that by using those patches, I can actually improve uh, the user experience in Chrome OS. And these actually, I'm talking about Chrome because this is what I work with, but this solution can actually apply to uh, Ubuntu or any, any Linux based uh, operating system. Um, so the proposed solution is called timeout detection and recovery. Uh, it's a new feature. It's still work in progress. Um, it can increase both stability and robustness by allowing applications to detect uh, when the individual individual batch buffer has corrupted the, the GPU. So that was that is the the main thing that we are bringing here. It's it's like from the application side, you can uh, detect or you can check early on whether the batch buffer that you're sending is causing the actual hang. Whereas before, uh, when we realized that we were hanging, it was already too, too late uh, in the pipeline. Um, 
here, the last sentence here, uh, this is the basic implementation. Uh, generally, generally speaking, the implementation introduces a new IR2 handler in the i915 driver, um, as well as two new GPU watchdog uh, command instructions. Um, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but basically, uh, on each batch buffer uh, start sequence, we inject a command, a GPU watch dot command uh, star, and after the uh, that uh, batch buffer start sequence, we inject a, a GPU watch to cancel. Um, here's TDR uh, step by step. Uh, I'm going to try to explain this in, in more detail, but basically that dotted line uh, is the division between user space and kernel. The media driver acts as the uh, application side, and uh, the media driver is the one that sets the watchdog threshold from each and every one of the batch buffers. So imagine you're uh, decoding a video stream, uh, VP8 or whatever, on each of those batch buffers, you can set the watchdog threshold, and then you can enable the watchdog timer. Then the media driver Watchdog timer star and a watchdog timer cancel. The start uh, instruction will actually kick the timer. This timer, it's, it's the uh, threshold, is actually set by the media driver. So you as an application developer are, uh, you are in charge of that threshold. Of course, you have a knowledge of uh, what the work is going to be, so you can set it to whatever that work workload is. Um, can set by the media driver, and that will start uh, ticking. If the timer reaches the threshold, right, so it goes from 50 milliseconds down to zero, when it reaches zero, uh, an interrupt uh, gets fired, and then it gets handled by our RAQ handler. And at that point, we've detected a GPU hang. That's basically how we're uh, catching that uh, batch buffer cost the, the, the hang. If the batch buffer, on the other hand, completes before the threshold value that you've set, and it reaches the cancel instruction, then uh, then the watch watchdog timer gets canceled, and then no, nothing happens. So that means that batch buffer is fine, and then there's no there, there's no hang. So again, going back to the Chrome OS uh, solution. GPU process, the media driver, uh, the video application crashed. Now, instead of resetting the whole thing, we just reset the media engine. Because we're setting the threshold to a very small value than the default value from the uh, graphics driver, then we can come back from that reset fairly quickly. We're talking about milliseconds instead of seconds, which was the default value before this implementation. Now, uh, so it's a, it's, a, it's a GPU reset mechanism that is based on time, but how low can, can it be, right? Um, as I was saying, uh, the media driver can set the value, and you, you as a developer has the option to set it, uh, but you can't really set it too low or be too aggressive because then you end up with uh, too many false positives. Um, on the other hand, if you make it too big, then you're defeating the whole purpose because then the driver itself has a default, a default reset value. 
uh, that is outside of the, of the GPU watchdog. Um, as a guideline, this is the value, values that we are using right now. For 1080p, we're, having, we're using 50 milliseconds, that 1080p screen. We're using uh, 50 milliseconds for 4K, 100 milliseconds, 8K, 500, and 16K, 2,000 milliseconds. Of course, this is just theory, right? Um, we don't have such a big displays right now, but uh, this is the values that we're, we think we should use. And uh, of course, this is still uh, under uh, investigation. And um, if people have other you know, ideas or, or what values we should use, then uh, fee uh, well, uh, feedback is welcome. Uh, a word about preemption. So again, uh, going back to the watchdog uh, step by step, we have the media driver setting the watchdog timer time timeout. We flush we flush the batch buffer. We initiate the watchdog timer, and then the graphics driver start processing the batch buffer. Now, what happens if during the uh, during the execution of the batch buffer, we get preempted, and then we've enabled the watchdog. Um, then when we go back to that other new process that got us into the preempt preemptive state, then that other uh, process will be then, would then, will then have uh, the watchdog enabled, which is not what we meant, right? Um, so then basically, I think what we're trying to do now is uh, the driver itself more, must cancel the timer during the preemption sequence. Um, then another question would be, OK, you've, you've enabled a uh, watchdog timer. Uh, you've preempted that process. You've disabled it. Now you come back to that process. And then what do you do, you do right? Uh, do you enable it again? What happens to the watchdog timer that you started with? Let's say you, you started with 50, 50 milliseconds. Then you, you tick that, you, you in, uh, timer goes down, let's say 30 milliseconds. And then you get preempted. So when you come back from preemption, do you start at 30, right? Or do you restart the timer again? Right, so those are the questions that we are uh, di di uh, di discussing right now. Uh, the last thing will be how a compositor could benefit from this uh, feature. Uh, the, uh, the way I made it is uh, very uh, like a general uh, architecture. It's, it doesn't follow any specific uh, compositor. The only requirement would be that the compositor uh, uh, enables Oh, uses 3D acceleration and it has access to the hardware through the K KMS DRM uh, API. Um, as I was saying before, the VAPI driver has n that new knowledge of detecting when a batch buffer has gone bad. And that knowledge has actually been exposed to, to user space, in which case the capacitor can now detect earlier in the sequence. Uh, when the uh, when a particular batch, batch buffer has hung the GPU, uh, the way I could see this working would be, for example, um, for example, you ha you're running a video, a video, you're, you're decoding the video, and so the compositor is basically sending those frames. Now, at some point in time, the the video application crash crashes, um, but instead of the compositor blindly uh, displaying that batch buffer that got uh, damaged, it can actually re uh, it can actually use that information that we're given the compositor and then show, prop, uh, for example, the previous the previous good frame that it that it was able to render. Um, this is the latest status in open source of uh, this feature. Um, basically, it's a work in progress, uh, but the discussion is actually happening in upstream. Um, 
I was able to prototype that solution in Ubuntu OS uh, using the i965 media driver, which is the le legacy uh, media driver that we have, and that the one that we use in Chrome. And also in at Intel, we have a new uh, open source driver called the IHD, which is going to be used in future generations. Um, it, so it's, a, it's an open source driver, but it's a separate driver. And so I was able to get it working on both uh, uh, software stacks. I validated it using the FM, FMPEG uh, binary by decoding, um, I believe it was VP8 that I was using. And in uh, Chrome OS, I, used, I actually developed a very dummy uh, video app uh, in which I was just decoding VP8 again uh, through the Android on Chrome uh, stack. This is, uh, if, this in, if this interests you in any way, uh, these are the links to the open source uh, current implementation. Um, there's work happening in the kernel. There's also work happening in the i965 media driver. Uh, and I'm trying to upstream both, both of them. Um, but of course, uh, any help you guys can give uh, uh, would be really appreciated. That's it. I think I have five minutes, so questions? Yes? Yes, so the, the video application is in some way a very nice one because you can predict the time that your submission takes quite well based on the, the, the size of the image, right? Right. Have, have you looked into this at all for 3D um, submissions? 3D submissions. Um, I have not. To be honest, I have not because the use case that we have was video, and that was the one affecting products. Uh, and then um, also, if you go back to the Chrome OS architecture, that GPU process is 3D. And so, if you, you, I mean, this thing works for different engines that we have. It could be the 3D engine and the media engines. But if you reset the media engine, then then that GPU process will go will go away. You see what I'm trying to say? What, when you reset the GPU? So, yeah, so if I go, oh man. Um, so the solution, you can reset these guys independently. That's fine. We are focusing on the media engine because that was the use case that we, we started with. You're asking if we can reset this guy. The answer is yes, we can do it. But I'm just saying, going back to my use case in Chrome, because the GPO process, it's a render, it's a 3D app. If you reset, I mean, I guess, I guess uh, if there's an issue with that uh, process, you can reset and come back earlier because you're resetting the timeout, the watchdog threshold to a, to a smaller value. I guess that's the only benefit you can get. Any other question? Yes. <laughs> Is there a plan to uh, put this uh, recovery in the hardware itself instead of doing it on the driver? In the hardware itself? Uh, the engine itself detects that it's hanging and Gets yeah. Internal. Yeah. Okay. I. Yeah. Is there? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But we. I don't think so. Is that simpler? But, but. Yeah. Maybe. But I don't know. Yeah. Uh, could you please explain why does it require different delay times for different resolutions? Because I'm. I'm okay, to okay. That. I mean, why right, right, right. Because, more time right, because. For the user, whether he's using 4K or 8K. Right, right, right. For, you, you're right. For the user, it doesn't matter. It it's doesn't tra transparent matter. to them. Yeah. But for us, that we know what's happening, it matters because f from a 1080p to 4K, you have f four times as many pixels. If you go to the 8K, then you have eight times as many. So there are more pixels that you have to process. 
in that in that the frame in the media engine right the video codec but it's still it's take still the same amount of money to display no. 60 fps no no from a from a one K from a ten eighty P to an A K display, of course you it's gonna take more time to decode that stream. Okay. But five hundred Yeah, as I was saying, that was just just values okay. that we, we think are the right ones, but yeah. If you if you have better ideas, no, feel free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Comment. So there is also offline transport so that you can do you don't have to do it real hard. So you can use the media in Teams also for Correct. Correct. Yes, but you're not talking about offline. You're talking about real time playing a video. Mm -hmm. The user is playing right, something. Right, right. And it just hangs there. So whether the user experiences that on a 4K or a 16K, I don't know. I don't even know if there is one in the market. But, uh, but 500 milliseconds, for an AK, 500 milliseconds is it's small, in my opinion, right? Before this implementation, the default value would be 12 seconds, which is the time it would take the, the GPU to, to come back. To so from 12 seconds default to a 500 milliseconds for AK. Hey, good job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all, yeah. Okay. Straight off, yeah. Any other question? All right, that's all. Thanks.